Hello one and all, and welcome to Behind the Glass, your weekly automotive podcast hosted by two rather uninformed enthusiasts. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I'm Sam from the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass. I'm Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales. And you can watch us each week on YouTube. You can also listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and most podcast players. We hope you enjoy the episode. Well, here we are, back in Blighty, back home in the UK. What's happened to you, mate? What do you mean, what's happened to me? Well, for a start, you look like you got dressed in the dark. You today. always say there's nothing changed. What do you mean, what's happened to me? According to you, <laughs> that's the norm. You've got no lights in your house. And uh, you need a haircut, mate. I know, I'm a bit what's, all over the place. Yeah, what's happened? You <laughs> well, was late today. I was late. I'm very rarely late, to be honest. I am. Have I ever been late? I think this might be the first time no, I was it's, late. it's rare, yeah, yeah. Things are a bit hectic at the moment. Um, all will become clear uh, in the weeks. And actually, you know what? I was going to say in the weeks ahead, but really next year. Uh, I am I am working feverishly behind the scenes. I love that when they <laughs> say that, the YouTubers. We're working flat out behind the scenes. Don't worry about that. When actually they're just sitting at a laptop just... Doing right, nothing. emails, yeah. Just scrolling through Instagram. <laughs> I actually said that in a video the other day. I was like, I hate to be that cliched YouTuber who's like, guys, they've got some really exciting projects. Can't tell you anything about them. But um, you're you're mean to mob me up because you actually know that statement is true. So <laughs> I, I hate you. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, genuinely, uh, lots is going on. And it's just meant that I'm all over the place. I probably did get dressed in the dark this morning. I, I agree. I, I actually had a shave. I could have cut my hair. I just didn't have time. I've got to be honest, mate. I'm working harder than you these days. Well, no, that's a lie. That, no, that's not a lie. Because look at you. You've got a nice trim, wearing a nice boss gilet. But I, I, I still work hard, but I also work smart, mate. Ah, uh, look at you. You're, you're, doing, you're doing what I did 10 years ago. I'm working 17 people's jobs. Yeah, yeah. That, that is exactly what <laughs> yeah, you're doing. Yeah. You're, you're doing four or five people's jobs, which is yeah, fine yeah. for now. But there'll become a point in your life where you go, I cannot do this anymore. Oh, no, that was three years ago. <laughs> I'm just still doing it. No. I'm just still, because I'm a control freak. But that's fine, mate, because yeah. so am I. What, you have to, what you'll have to try and do at some point is learn to delegate, firstly, and let go a little bit. Because yeah. actually, in the long run, you'll be better off. You'll earn more money. Yeah, and, and, and well, that's one of the things that I'm working towards. So uh, it's unfair. Behind the scenes. Yeah, it's unfair. <laughs> Behind the scenes. Can't tell you about it, but I'm going to. Uh, it's unfair to call him a young kid. But I've got somebody, hopefully coming on, 2023, who's going to help with... The, the tasks that don't actually require me, that somebody else could do. Yeah. But because I'm a control freak, I'm currently like seven pages into a briefing document of like style of posts. Uh, you know, because I basically my Instagram stories, things like that, like my coffee. For example, I always forget to post about the coffee. Yeah. Whenever I post about seeing through glass coffee, we sell like 10 or 15 bags. Yeah, yeah. So if I was to regularly post, we'd probably sell more. So I'm sitting there at the end of the week, I'm like, oh, I didn't post about the coffee. So that's one of their tasks, for example, that they can create, go out, create some really killer content that will be overseen by me and approved by me that we can then post on stories to remind people about coffee. That, that's a prime example. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're right. I'm doing 15 people's jobs. And it's ridiculous. 2023, one of those tasks. I'm going to sit if I'm going to sit here with you one day and I'm going to watch what you do. I'm going to streamline you. Oh, uh, I like that. Actually. I'm going to go, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that no more. Get someone to do that. You can do that, do that, do that. You Perfect. know what? I, firstly, I would genuinely appreciate that. Like I'm actually signing up, but I'm also, uh, I'm aware of a potential business opportunity here for you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are various online courses where they get people like you or big creators like Casey Neistat or or other... What's that guy who does the life advice? He's really annoying. He's got a high-pitched voice. I don't know, mate. I'm, uh, sure. I'm too busy. V, Gary V, Gary V. Yeah. Um, anyway, but you could do a course. Like, right, five tips from Tony of how to make a million pounds in a day. No. <laughs> <laughs> no I don't want to give all the secrets away. <laughs> and I don't make a million pounds a day. No, you make five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, I've been approached many times. Yeah. People yeah. DMing me and saying, can you... We'll pay you for your services to... The thing is, mate, I just... I, I haven't got time. I'd have to... Okay. I'd have to recon, reconstruct again. Well, here we go. Let's let's ask, ask the audience. So, guys and girls, 
If you would be interested in some special business focused episodes where maybe I quiz Tony about certain elements of business or, or Tony just riffs about best practices for business, let us know. We'd totally be up for doing that. I would be super interested. Yeah. Uh, and I think I know there's lots of people out there who either run their own businesses or thinking of starting their own businesses or just in PAYA jobs and thinking like, how can I better myself? So yeah, if you'd be interested in that, let us know in the comments. Well, you know some of the stuff, mate, because we've had lots of conversations in the past off camera about about stuff so you know the basis is the same yeah it's just just um it, and it's really hard in car sales but the the best way to expand the business is by streamlining it yeah if yeah. you can streamline a business you've done, look, look at all the big businesses there's always a lot of them i streamline my editing <laughs> It's all the stuff around the side. <laughs> it's what holds me down. But anyway, yeah, so we'd definitely be interested to know if you want to hear more of that. And actually, it's the kind of the perfect opportunity to make rather a big announcement here on the podcast. Something we've been teasing for a while. And I think we're finally ready to unveil because we have set up a channel over on Recast. And a kind of business special episode is something that could potentially sit on recast in the future uh-huh so uh, if you don't know anything about recast they have previously sort of been in the sports arena uh, but they're expanding into the creator space and i just really like how their platform works and thought it'd be a cool way for us to kind of grow the audience but also evolve the podcast essentially essentially uh, nothing's going to change. If you enjoy listening to the podcast each week on YouTube or Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc., uh, that's not that's fine. That's you can that, that will just continue to happen. Yeah. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating some exclusive content for Recast and giving you all some early access to content on Recast. So over the last couple of years, we've been amazingly supported by a whole lot of people over on Patreon. Yeah. We wouldn't be where we are without people on Patreon. No, no, we couldn't do this every week without them. Genuinely, they've been incredible. Um, And one of the benefits they've had over the last couple of years is early access to the episodes. They get it about three or four days before it goes live to the rest of you. Uh, They also get it ad-free. So that's one of the things that you're going to be able to get on Recast. You have to head over there. You're about to watch or listen to the episodes probably from about a Monday before the Thursday, so three or four days early. Uh, and it can be ad-free as well. But in addition to that, we're going to actually live stream <laughs> some of our recording sessions. So usually when Tony and I record on a Monday, we come in, we have a bit of a chat first, we catch up, then eventually we go, right, let's record. And at the end, we chat a bit as well. You're going to be able to see all of that. The whole lot. It makes me <laughs> terrified. Because if you knew some of the things that Tony said off camera before I said, right, action oh we're definitely gonna get sued uh, but yeah those will be taking place uh, and we're also gonna be creating as i say yeah this exclusive content so maybe a special episode about yeah running a business or maybe the behind the scenes of a, of a press drive i've been on uh, or you know some stories from recent adventures that we've had together uh, but also after the checkered flag i know lots of you have been asking about what happened to paul and my's f1 special series after the checkered flag well that is coming back in 2023 we have actually done an, a season review, a 2022 season review, which is already on the Recast page. Um, it, After the Flag will be available audio only on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and things, but the but the video version is going to be exclusively on Recast. Oh, wow. There so we no, go. No YouTube for the Checkered Flag anymore. No. Oh. Oh. Now, if you want to know how Recast works, like the ins and outs of it, stick around to the end of the episode because I don't want to go into it just now. I want to crack on and chat because we haven't caught up in a while. Um, so yeah, if you want to, if you're interested in this, stick around to the end. But essentially, uh, things are behind a paywall, but it's all it's all via credits. So essentially, when you log on, you can buy credits with cash, uh, or you can earn credits by watching ads on Recast or even sharing content, which is what we want you to do. Yeah. So if you come and watch a live stream session, you really enjoy it, share it with your friends. You'll Send it to your mates. Credits. Yeah. And if you're something like, oh, well, I got I got to pay for content. What? Well, firstly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but secondly, we're Please. trying to make this super affordable. 100 credits is about a pound. And most of our content is going to be charged at a pound per episode. Um, we think we're going to be doing about six to eight pieces of content on Recast to start with per month. There's loads of other stuff on Recast, by the way, not just us, loads of sports stuff. So it's really cool. And we're really excited about this. As I say, we, we, it, it, it entices us to make more content, but rewards us for doing so. Of course. Hopefully rewards you as well. If you're supporting this podcast financially, you're going to get benefits out of it. But as I say, if you're sitting here going, oh, classic, another YouTube channel trying to suck me dry of money, 
Don't worry. Essentially, nothing will change for you. This is just if you want more. If you want more from behind the glass, then Recast is going to be your answer. So stick around. At the end, you'll find out a whole load more. So I guess let's catch up quickly on America. I think you loved America. Loved it. Did you really? Like, honestly, not just lying in front of the camera, you genuinely loved it? No, loved it. Like, like not loved it where I, I think I want to go and live there tomorrow. I love London. I love the UK. I, you know, at this point in my life, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Um, but I really enjoyed it, mate. Just generally, you were a very good tour guide. We we had we always have fun when we go away, anyway. So we had a good laugh. We um, we saw loads of stuff. Some of it blew me away in terms of even some of the cars, mate. Some of it, I wish I'd still laid in bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, specifically, at the moment you're talking about, but I won't share them. A <laughs> couple, of, couple of times, I lost the will to live. <laughs> but, but, but in general, like it, it's fascinating visiting different countries. Anyway, from my point of view, but LA was probably one of the biggest eye openers. Mm. Like in general, mm. as, as Although it's very similar to the UK in terms of the foods, very similar. People talk the same, you know, um, the way people live is very similar. But it was just a really big eye opener of the different cultures and the just the way that people behaved. Everyone, every, everything's everyone, everyone in America is out to it. Well, especially in LA, is out to impress each other, and it, it's really evident. Even when you're walking down the street, you know, you can see it a mile off. So. It was really good to see. I think that is very LA specific. Yeah. So I was going to caveat everything you were just saying with the fact that, you know, that was your first experience of America, which is why I asked you. But, you know, that is California and LA, which I think so many of our American viewers were keen to point out. You, you know, that's like going to Rome and saying, oh, I understand Europe now. I've seen Shit Europe. Off. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Italians. <laughs> We're neither of us are that keen on Rome. Just no. going to put that out there. So. <laughs> oh, that's why I used it as an example because I knew it would rile you up. But yeah, you, you couldn't go to one city in Europe and say, ah, yeah, like Europe is this. No. And, and of course, you know, uh, I was about to say, I'm very confused in case you didn't know. Europe is made up of lots of different countries, but I think we'll get unfollowed. I'm going to cut that bit out. <laughs> but if this was a live stream, I wouldn't have that opportunity. Exactly. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so uh, I think the point being that you now need to see more of America to really appreciate it. it's cold. But, but LA and California, you enjoyed. Um, any specific non-car related highlights? Oh, oh, oh mate. I mean, there was a there was a couple of things. Uh, the one that we can't possibly talk about on camera because it's far too explicit. Was that a highlight? It was. It was an eye opener. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, I've we never. Can, we can skirt around it. Let's not. We won't go into the details. But I, I can't. I can't. I can't <laughs> you've got to do this, mate, okay. because I, we, we'll get sued. <laughs> or I'll get shot. So, any younger viewers, maybe just step away from the podcast for a couple of minutes uh we were staying in a part of town uh or west hollywood uh near santa monica boulevard which is a very famously sort of very pro lgbtq plus area uh and i tried to give tony the heads up on that oh so i just said look you know when we go down there just this is what you're going to expect to see and he's like yeah no, no, no problem no problem so we went to the supermarket and as we were walking out of the supermarket we got to a, a traffic light you know so to cross the road and it was literally like no one walks in LA. So it's us and then one other guy walking towards us. With his dog. With his little dog and very sort of well-dressed, very stylish. And he was on the phone and he was on the phone. He was talking so loudly on the phone. You could have heard him in Chicago on the other side of America. Yeah. So loudly. And all I'll say is he was boasting about the size of his and his <laughs> husband's appendages. <laughs> Appendage! <laughs> <laughs> and basically explaining why would he cheat when his husband's <laughs> genitalia the, was as large as it was. And he was, there were numbers involved and it got a lot more, not grotesque, but a lot more, what's it called? Um, well, he used a lot of descriptive language. Yeah. <laughs> and we were standing on the side of the road <laughs> for like four minutes with this guy. And Tony was like, what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> so that was, that was full on. I thought it was hilarious. That would definitely, you know, we referenced that quite a lot during the trip. Okay. So apart from that, what else? Any other highlights? 
Um, yeah. The... I mean, it wasn't a highlight. You nearly killed me. But I, it's another thing I vividly remember. Putting me in that buggy. The Myers Manx. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this didn't make it into a main video in the end, um, but it was one of the, one afternoon we had a few hours to go down and meet the team at Myers Manx. So if you don't know Myers Manx, the the original, the iconic June buggy um, uh, that has kind of like been bought back uh, in recent years. They're working on an electric version, uh, but they're also still doing the kits for the uh, for the original. And these are things just to go and yeah have fun down in Mexico or on the sand dunes or whatever. Like they're really like they're based on a shortened vw beetle chassis yep with then a uh was it a fiberglass tub i don't know mate i uh, mean okay fiberglass tub and a reworked vw beetle engine yeah so they weigh nothing and they have dodgy old engines but they were kit cars sold in the 70s yeah so, so the ones that they have knocking around today are basically only as good as the guy who built them so a bit you know take a caterham usually that's sort of well worked on because if you're going to build a caterham you're going to be pretty like into it you're almost an engineer but in the 70s <laughs> when you're like hey let's build a miles max like oh wow dodgy yeah. dodgy to yeah. say the least yeah um but they're so cool these things and for me they really remind me of like grand theft auto it's like such grand theft auto kind of style of a vehicle and to be in california and to get one of these things and drive out to the beach and be in the sunshine i was like this is too got an opportunity to not get tony in one of these and just go for a bit of a drive and that they, the team was super nice they were they? very very nice yeah and, and actually i really like talking to people like that because they're like proper engineers and and they really know their stuff engineer wise and when you walk around the their workshop or their their, their factory their, their little factory that they had um, it's really cool to see, you know, what super impressive the engineering involved. Yeah, they had some really clever stuff going on, especially in terms of engines, because basically you can kind of bolt any kind of engine on the back. Anything you want. Yeah, within reason in terms of weight and distribution and things like that, because obviously you don't want it to hang right out the back because well, the front wheels just won't touch the ground. So <laughs> I asked him if he could bolt a V8 on it. <laughs> <laughs> and he said it might be a bit too heavy for that. Yeah, so, yeah. but you know, you can do really cool stuff and there was some amazing engineering going on. Yeah. But, but they gave us the keys to this decidedly... Do Actually, should we tell them? They were going to give us keys to another one. Yeah. We were waiting. We were all lined up. We'd done all... I'd done all my B-roll shots. I like, here we go. And then just as we were out to drive away, one of the mechanics came out and they're like, oh, they're going out in... I think they called him, you know, Big Red or whatever. And they went, oh, I wouldn't take Big Red. <laughs> I went down to the grocery store the other day and the left rear brake locked up and I spun around at 60 miles an hour. <laughs> and Tony was like... Uh, I'm not getting in that. I'm not getting in that <laughs> thing. So we got in another one, which was, I would say, also a little bit shoddy, but it was cool. Like it was, the, yeah. it was the perfect golden hour sunset. We cruised to Lido, Lido Beach, um, near Costa Mesa, which is I don't know an hour and a half south of, of LA. But it was just, it was. Yeah. It, we had a lot of fun. It was fun. That was good. probably my two biggest highlights of the whole trip, though. Were well, the reason why we went there, the live podcast. Yep. Yeah. I met some amazing people. It's very, very cool to see. You've seen it all, all the while, because you've been all around the world. I haven't so much, especially out of Europe, the different car cultures and how they behave. American people are so friendly. So I, friendly. I, I mean, I mean, uh, everywhere, full stop. Restaurants. I know there's a, an agenda behind the restaurants because they want a tip. Yeah. But, but in general, American people are very friendly. The podcast, obviously, we met some lovely people. Uh, and the last thing we've done, the, our sister podcast, yeah. <laughs> Spikes Radio, we've yes. got to give them a shout out. Yeah, that was amazing. That right? was so good. Hopefully you would have heard it by now because it actually went out quite a few weeks ago. So yeah, we, we went to see Spike and Zuckerman uh, to do an episode of Spike's Car Radio. Um, and we had an absolute blast, actually. It, yeah. was, it basically got lined up a couple of days before. I, I'd been speaking to Spike for, for ages uh, to see if we could do something whilst we were in town. Um, but as you can imagine, they're as busy as we were. So trying to get it to all sort of align was not straightforward. But yeah. we, it was the last thing we did whilst we were in LA. And it was really like the perfect, perfect send off, wasn't yeah. it? Because I've been a fan of that show for ages. I, I had played you a few episodes, but you actually weren't that familiar with it. So no. it was almost more fun for you because you were meeting from the first time. Yeah, they were really nice lads as well. And so weird, Al. They're not the same as us, but but there was like a, a sensible presenter and a really grumpy man. I'm so sorry, Zuckerman. <laughs> <laughs> but he's me, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and he really is like me. Yeah. Like... 
It but, was. It, I I had predicted it for a while that he was the American cousin of you, and you yeah. were the British cousin of him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that dynamic is the same. And yeah, you, you were just both sitting there grumpy. I think it was desperate for you to be grumpier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you were on your best, best, best. What's called best behavior. But yeah, I think we're super keen to get them on our show now. So hopefully their whole crew, maybe Lieberman as well. And uh, obviously we know Matt Farrow well, or at least I know Matt well. I think next time they're all in the UK, maybe around Goodwood or something like that, we can try and get them on on this show, which would be amazing. And and we were supposed to see Matt too. We were supposed to do an episode with Matt, but unfortunately some diary conf- uh, conflicts meant that we had to rearrange that as well. So, you know, those things will happen, but the, I agree, the Spikes Car Radio episode was was so much fun. Yeah, really and, loved and it. And a really nice way to, to finish off our trip. But... Yeah, all in all, I thought it was a, a brilliant expedition. Yeah, had a had a blast. Um, I hopefully made some well content that you guys enjoyed over on the main channel. Um, but we also yeah were able to make some cool episodes uh, on here. And I, I, the feedback that I've seen is that you guys really enjoyed that. And we'll definitely be going back to America next year. I actually, got a really cool invite to go to North Carolina. Lovely, um, which would be lovely. Um, and uh, yeah, I think you know spring ish next year we'll start looking at some more American trips. So stay tuned for details on that. Anyway, let's get back to UK stuff because a lot has actually happened since we've been away. A lot. And off air. Yeah. Um, I just want to quickly touch on an event I went to. Oh. Uh, Organised by uh, a club called the Targa Club. Super cool. Uh, happened down at Lydon Hill. So Kent. Yeah, you yeah, right near you actually. Canterbury. Well, a little bit well, further than not, you. not really right near me. It's about sixty miles from me, but well, okay. you know, it's all the same once you go down there. Outside the M twenty five, it's all a blur. Uh, um, it's a bit stereotypical. Yeah. But uh <laughs> it's a track that you would have seen on old Top Gear. Yeah. They used to go there a lot. It's like a rally cross circuit. Um but these guys were really, really cool. It's a sort of I don't know how new it is as a club, but the premise is come and see and drive cool stuff. Yeah. So it's almost like a swingers club for car enthusiasts. I've been to Lydon Hill, by the way. You've been to Lydon Hill? Flat okay. out, yeah. You haven't been to a Tiger Club event? No, no, no. no, 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 no. That's, that's what I mean. so, I've so, been around the, the, been around the loop. Just, yeah, but it is a bit of a loop, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It sort of just goes like that. Yeah, it's a bit... Like an L um, loop. Yeah, it's a bit of an L loop. It's, yeah. It made me feel a bit nauseous. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean... I, I wasn't the most thrilling circuit I've ever been around. No. But, you know, that it is what it is. Not the speed you drive, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but the reason we were there was for the rally cross element which is perfect what Target Club had lined up basically all these 80s and 90s rally cars so there was a whole load of RS200 Fords oh my and, god uh, Le- da- uh, da- 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 I was going to call it Dancia Delta Dancia Delta Lancia Delta Integrales um, what else was there some amazing amazing stuff that was any popping- Audi Quattros uh, I don't think there was a no? Quattro no there was an old Ren- no not a Renault an old Peugeot Peugeot, yeah, probably. I think an old yeah, Peugeot. Yeah. Anyway, and they were probably launching it off the jump yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And then there was also some cool um, track going stuff. So McLaren 67, uh, 765LT, there was a Project 7, load of Porsches. Like it was like just a really yeah, cool good. event with good people. So I want to give them a shout out. Thank you for having me down. Um, should we talk about some cars that have launched? Uh, There's yeah. been a few. Really? Oh, mate, you've missed the scoop. Well, firstly, considering that all of LA was dominated by the 911 Dakar for us, uh, let's talk about the Hurricane Starato. Oh, yeah. Because, of course, I mean, that was basically released whilst we were in America, but officially was unveiled shortly after. Um, I know what you think about the Dakar, so I know you're going to think the same. It's worse. You think it's worse? It's worse. Because? Because it's uh, uh, at least a 911 is a sports car that could be half modified to be jacked up a little bit. I mean... The Hurricane is a full-on supercar, sucked to the floor, all for aerodynamics and how fast it can go. That's what it's designed for. And you want to jack it up and... I mean, it's it's ridiculous, mate. It's the most stupidest thing I've ever heard. Well, it's as if somebody within the VW group had this idea at the same time and kind of whispered it in Porsche and Lambo's like, ears and they both went, oh, that's a great idea, thinking that one of them would do it, but not both. Yeah, it's, you know it's mean? like giving an... Uh, um, what's his name? Usain Bolt. Yeah. Tell him to do the hundred meters in Chelsea boots. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're not wrong. I mean, so I've got some stats. It's a on the stupid Serato. thing. Six hundred and one horsepower. So it's down on horsepower because actually the interesting part is it's got a functional snorkel on the roof. So you know an air intake up on the top, like an STO, like an STO, but it's actually functional because the STO one is pointless. Right. The reason it's functional is because obviously if they kept them down at the side, you get all the dust and the dirt in, so they moved up the top. But that means that you get a reduction in power. So six hundred one horsepower. 160 mile an hour top speed because it's got stupid off-road tyres on it, which you just don't want really ever, right? And put off-road tyres on most things, bit of a disaster. Handling, feel, road noise, etc. Why is the power less? Because the air filter's up and not low? Because it doesn't get enough air. It can't, it can't get as the same amount of air, so it runs at reduced power. And because heat rises 
Oh, it's fair. cool, low yeah. down. Yeah, okay, well, there you go. Um, uh, 44 millimetres higher. So half the height that the 911 Dakar can do, because at maximum that's 80 millimetres. Stupid. 30 millimetres wider. But, <laughs> this is the bit that cracks me up, it's got a lot of protection underneath. Good. But so much of the, like, uh, body work to encounter that, or, sorry, encompass that wider um, girth, carbon fibre. Which to me just sounds like a lot of expensive repairs to yeah, me. Yeah, it's a fortune, yeah. Yeah. So Which actually means no one's ever going to drive it anywhere else. They say the that road. this is a car for for gravel and snow. Oh, no, uh, sand and gravel. Nothing more extreme. So basically, the road into Salon Privé. You know, like, it's like, <laughs> it's, the, it's when you have to do a bit of a dusty gravel track to a car. Event. Or you live in Dubai. Yeah, but no one in Dubai. I mean, actually, sorry, that's a complete lie. Someone in Dubai will. But... They're proper sand dunes. This car will not survive proper sand dunes. No. That's the whole point. Like, it can be dusty, not sandy. Like, the 911 Dakar, supposedly, and on their launch material, is like in a sand dune rocking life. But this car is like, eh. One got them big sand dunes, like them Toyota Land Cruisers do no, in Dubai. No, 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 no. Like, no, but no. Not even the Dakar. No, one. but the Dakar, do you see that launch video? It is in a proper sandy dune, using that four wheel drive and that clearance to actually do some good driving. I agree. I don't think it's going to do anything like a no, Land no, Cruiser no. can, but it supposedly looks more um, capable. Yeah. This thing, like it's genuinely the gravel wo- road to the vineyard. Like yeah. that is what it does. 900 cars in total, 228,000 pounds, which is 55 grand more than the Dakar. And yeah, I just, for me, it's like this car, if we thought the Dakar was semi pot like who's going to buy the Dakar and use it? This car is like, what the heck? Yeah. But they'll sell them all. Really? Yeah, they'll sell them all. Mm. Only 900? There's enough Lambo buyers out there that'll go, oh yeah, I'll bet. All right, we'll see. But I think it'll be useless. Yeah, yeah. we'll see. If you want a top tip, just save yourself, on both cars by the way, just save yourself a £100,000 and go and buy a Range Rover. Yeah, see, but the thing is, <laughs> since we got back from LA, I'm way more into that Dakar every day. <laughs> like, as each day goes by, I get more and more into that Dakar. Yeah. But you like 360 Ferraris, mate. The only car in 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 the whole of the history that in the last two years didn't appreciate. <laughs> that and the Mercy Largo, uh, as <laughs> me and Paul has pointed out. Um, but it's not about, <laughs> mate, it's not about values. Well, <laughs> well, actually, it is. If we're talking about £100,000, it's full on about values. Uh, I am talking about experience and emotion right. and feeling. Okay, we'll and just buy a 4S then. Because the same no, thing. because I like the idea <laughs> right. of the Dakar, the thought that I could go, I would just want to get a Dakar and go to a tire kicker club off-roading event. I want to go somewhere where everyone else is in four by fours and just be in a Dakar and be like, sick. Lovely. Great. I don't want to be in a Storato because I'm just going to get stuck and break my back and then have... A twenty thousand pound carbon fiber repair bill. I I wouldn't mind betting. Once you see that Storato, that Lamborghini, I bet when you see that, you'll go, hmm. I actually quite like that. I'd probably have one because that's just what you do, mate. No, because the thing is, I don't like a Lambo theoretically. I well, do, I do often quite like them. Exactly. <laughs> I say that I don't, and then I get them. And I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Storato, I'm just like, because the Huracan is, ne- I'm never comfortable in Hurricane, so I always struggle. Yeah, I'd, have the STO, I'd have the STO all the time. Because this is also, don't forget, the last hurrah of that V10. Next one's plug-in hybrid, so it's a, it's a swan song. But I would have the STO as a swan song every day of the week. I love that STO. Why would I have the Storato? Mm. Again, you're the only person who loves the STO, the rest of them have Sal. Yeah, but anyway. <laughs> um, My point's proven. Sort of, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, another new car that launched, which I think is slightly, le- well, actually as pointless. Well, you correct me if I'm wrong here. RS6 and RS7 performance. Why the world, mate? It's what they do. 30 horsepower more. Yeah. 15 grand more. Yeah, done it in the last car. I did they? Oh, yeah. Okay, of course. Yeah, I done it in the last car. Me. What happens is, is that that model falls off. I told mm-hmm. you about this mm-hmm. before. That model falls off. It's the same with the M4 and they go competition, although they've missed it out this time. Well, in the UK at least. And yeah, 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 yeah. They go, uh, well, we're not selling as many of these now. Let's give it a bit. Let's change the ECU, basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, we put it up 15 grand. Managed to reduce weight as well. Good. You know how much? Go on. Go on, have a guess. Five kilos. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> it's eight, eight kilos, kilos lighter. Um, there's Very a lot, good. Mainly insulation. So apparently it's louder in the cabin. Right. More exhilarating experience. Right. 
Then ask Audi when you can have one, by the way. Well, that and also having now been an RS6 owner, which I still have to remind myself of, I, there, there was never one point in that car I thought I could really do with 30 horsepower more. No. But, you know, but they'll sell. I mean, Archie Hamilton will buy one, but you'll, you know, pretend you, to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, Archie. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, you know, that, that's, you're right. That's what they do. And I can't knock them for it. No, it they is, all do it, mate. It is what it is, right? No, they all do it, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Porsche are actually the best at it. Porsche are the best at it. Yeah, look how many like, derivatives of, of 911s there are. I mean, they just keep going. But what I would say is that there's always, apart from the now the 992, which I think we predicted a long time ago, we said the 992 is looking like it's going to be a generation that there'll be so many iterations of. But usually you have the Carrera, Carrera S, oh, this is actually not right, but let's say- There's Carrera, loads of them, Yeah, mate. Carrera, Carrera S, Carrera GTS. Turbo, Turbo S, GT. Yeah, you're so right. <laughs> <laughs> but what they, like, it's always the same. And actually, so, okay, yeah. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't got a leg to stand on here. Yeah, I do not have a leg to stand on. Okay, uh, next up, my favorite car, and I want to talk about this for a little bit of time. The new Abarth 500E. Oh, that electric thing. Yeah. Oh, you didn't like electric cars last week. Now he loves them. No, you are the one, repeat, you are the one that doesn't like electric cars. I continuously, week in, week out, say the products are getting better and better. I'm enjoying them more and more. Mercedes EQS, AMG, Porsche Taycan, Audi e-tron. Like, I, I'm bang on about how much I like the products. It's the infrastructure and the fact that the green credentials in the EV are not actually as green as they pretend to be. All right. That, bear in mind you just said that. You're about, to, you want to buy one. So you can't. When did I say that? Well, because that, that's what you told it to me off camera. <laughs> so that's a complete lie. So you, you want to save the world, don't buy an EV. We sat here for half an hour listening to you about synthetic fuels the other week because electric cars are no good. <laughs> now you want to buy an electric bath because it, because it reminds you of that stupid yellow thing you give 30 grand for that the salesman saw you come in. <laughs> well, I constantly question why I have you on this podcast. <laughs> Because here I am trying. I'm to, the other you know, half of it. You ain't you know, got a choice. To, you know, <laughs> spill a narrative. What's it called? String out a narrative, and you just absolutely ruined me. Yes, I have said to Tony on modifications. I want that Abarth. I wasn't going to admit that on the podcast. I was just going to talk about it. But I have said I want it. I can't actually have it, and there's multiple reasons why. But can we? Before you just you know rip it apart. Two seconds. Yeah. Because, you know, fear, like any big, big corporation, is going to do this push towards EV. And, yeah, we bang on about the negatives. We have also both said, mate, that in certain circumstances, EVs do make sense. Yeah. And we're not sitting here saying scrap EVs. We just think that as a mass rollout, as the only solution is where it doesn't make sense. Absolutely, yeah. The one place we've both agreed it makes sense is in the city. Small electric cars for the city. When You've got a, uh, a, um, a short commute. You can charge them quickly. You can park them easily. That makes sense. And, and you don't live in a flat, which uh, yeah. is probably 50 or 60% of London. Sure, let's not get into that right now. Why did you charge it then? What? No, no, but what I'm... just That's pointless. Hold on! <laughs> don't annoy me. Please don't annoy me. You already have. What I'm saying is, oh, yeah. don't backtrack on your own chat that we have both previously agreed if electric cars are going to make sense, they're going to make sense as small city cars. Right? If you can charge them. Yes. Okay. If you can charge them. Yeah. <sighs> the 500E is the Fiat version, is one that we've both agreed and you have said multiple times before, you really like the look of the idea. Love it. Th thank you. Millions of in Monaco. Millions of them in Monaco. Perfect, Perfect in Monaco. Perfect sense. In Monaco. But we don't live in Monaco. We live in London. Central London still makes just the same amount of sense. Okay. Why doesn't it make the same sense here and not Monaco? Because uh, you can't charge them in this Stop country. Stop with the infrastructure. Well, I, don't that, wanna, I don't want to know It's true. About, but I'm going to come back to that at the end. But I need to come to it now. No, you don't. No, you don't. Just assume that you live in a house or an apartment that you can charge the vehicle. Make that assumption for now. Just make that assumption. Right, so I don't live in central London in the city then? You do. Because I live in... No, you don't. You live in Surrey. That's which is, which is a suburban. Just, which is if you had an E500, just, you wouldn't get to London and back because you wouldn't have enough charge. I just, I just walked into that. And we're not going to dwell on it too much because... In the mood you're in, you're going to reveal my exact address. But Tony's favourite joke at the moment is that I don't live in central London. Tells everyone who lives in London, lives in Surrey. <laughs> Just winding me up. My point being, okay, flip reverse it. My parents, who very much are in central London, have the ability to charge outside of their apartment. Yeah. So 
you, that's a lie, what you said. Oh, you never said it's You must not be able to charge it. Okay. So just make the assumption, please, Tony. Please just make the assumption. Well, we'll base, you it, on your, we'll base it on your parents' circumstances yes. then, because not... No, no. Yeah. Just stop. We're going to come back to a whole chat around charging <laughs> at the end of this. So you are literally wasting your breath. All right. Just make the assumption and tell me why, aside from charging... <laughs> A Fiat 500e makes less sense in London than in Monaco. Well, it makes less sense. It doesn't make less sense if that aside. Okay. Right. Thank you. Right. So, moving on. The Abarth version obviously takes what, just like with the petrol, the combustion engine variant, and spices it up. Now, there will be some purists, and I'm not an Abarth purist. I'm an Abarth fan, but there will be some purists who go, how can you have an Abarth without the engine, without that kind of dynamic, without the roariness, um, uh, you know, the throaty exhaust, etc. But for me, as we've seen over the last 10 or 15 years, Abarth is much about slapping a badge on an existing car as anything else. Yes, they put a lot of engineering into it, and there's a huge difference between driving an Abarth and a Fiat, but it is also just about brand value. It just separates you by saying, I'm in an Abarth, not a Fiat 500. But most people, including my sister, wouldn't be able to tell you the difference between a Fiat 500 and an Abarth 500. Uh, aesthetics or when she was in it, a- while it was moving? Yeah, aesthetics. Aesthetics for sure. Right. When it's moving, of course, they do a whole lot of engineering, but Abarth are claiming they've done the same with the electric. So not only have they re-engineered battery and, and um, uh, motor, uh, but also, yeah, dynamics, sound uh, from the electric sound, suspension feel, everything. So it's the same... Put a manual gearbox in it, have they? No. Oh. Well, but you can have an automatic Abarth. Well, you can, but most people have manual ones. Yeah, but you can have an automatic one. You you can, you're right. But you could have one leg, but you got two. I really don't understand your argument here, and I feel like you're doing it just to wind me up. No, I'm just I'm, I'm saying the facts. Ag- why, the are you facts. Ag- why are you against the Abarth 500E, considering that for about a year you have loved the Fiat 500E? Because the Fiat 500e is more suitable for everyone. Why? Because you've just said your sister wouldn't know the difference between between the two. Most normal people, don't forget, we always target the 10, 12, 13% of people that actually know what they're going to buy market-wise. And the reason why they do that... They pick a car because of the characteristics and how that car makes you feel. Agreed. A manual gearbox, the noise. You don't buy for a manual gearbox. No, no, no. But 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 you do. Sure. I'm not talking about you because you're talking about an above. The 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 the, uh, the above 500 is not. It's the same. It's exactly the same as the. It's not apart from well, apart from the way it looks. No, but, no, no. Diff- different, different delivery. So they've extended the ability to use the torque. So you have a wider band of torque available. The actual delivery of that torque, yeah. it's got the more power. It's got a different suspension feel. It's got a different interior. So the the interior, the driving dynamics and power delivery is different. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a it's an auto, not a manual for a start. Yeah, but it's an electric, mate. Yeah. It's only got one gear. Well, it's not the same. Then, it's is like it? a Taycan. Yeah, but but th- th- that's different. How's it different? Well, it's loads different. But but it's an electric well, vehicle. Can. No, I'm not saying how's a Taycan different from an Abarth, but you can't sit here and go, well, hold on a sec. Because an Abarth hasn't, the electric Abarth hasn't got a manual gearbox, it's a load of crap, it's not a real Abarth. How come a Porsche Taycan hasn't got a manual gearbox? That's not a real Porsche. Because, because be- Porsche enthusiasts enjoy a manual gearbox. So if the Taycan hasn't got a manual gearbox, well, it's not right then, it's not a real Porsche. Because the Porsche is more for the mass but the Abarth, if people want the mass, they'll just have the normal 500. The people that want the Abarth want different. They want the manual gearbox. They want the noise. It won't give you that. Although, actually, an electric has got one gear. You're quite right. But Lexus, as we speak today, I saw, saw something today. They're trying to make a manual transmission yeah. for an electric vehicle. That will change my argument and my dynamic slightly if they ever get to that stage they're still pumping in noise mate but we me and you as car enthusiasts we buy cars for an emotion that is why you buy an abarth an electric automatic abarth is not an emotion it's just a bit faster than its normal one 
But firstly, I would completely argue with you that a Porsche is for the masses. A Porsche is an enthusiast brand. People who are buying a Porsche Taycan are buying it for more than just the fact it can get you from A and B. There are plenty of electric vehicles out there, an Audi uh, Q4 e-tron or a Nissan Qashqai that are electric cars for the masses. I mean, even an Audi is not for the masses. A Porsche Taycan at £120,000 is targeting a very specific person. Who's yeah, probably, business owners. Yeah, business owners, of course, because that's yeah. the benefits you get here in the UK. But also, Not for long. Or also that's the you know the badge the 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 problem that we've got as enthusiast as all of these brands go electric is how does someone like jaguar someone like abarth someone like bentley someone like rolls royce how do they create an identity around an electric vehicle when theoretically the power delivery is all the same all they can really do is go faster in a straight line Okay, yes, they can make them look different. Yeah, and can improve some handling dynamics, but a Taycan is a very unique driving experience compared to the rest of the Porsche lineup. But compared to, trying to think of an equivalent, well, the RS each one is the same thing, isn't it? But most electric vehicles all do feel very similar. So how does a brand do it? So, of course, styling is one thing. Some of the driving experience or feel, for sure, and for Fiat and the Abarth, the only thing they can do is take the same formula that they've applied to a combustion engine vehicle and apply it where they can to the electric car. Uh, and so just saying, oh, it hasn't got a manual. You're a man who despises manual. Bangs I on am. Const- yes. Bangs yeah. on constantly about, oh, manual's crap. Why would you have a manual? But I wouldn't buy here. an Abarthy. No, no. But the point being, you can't use that as your sole argument. They don't have an option there. They are pushing towards electric. We have long said that small city electric cars make sense. If if we are all being forced to buy electric, if someone like me has to have an electric run around daily in the city, I would want the Abarth over the Fiat because, yes, firstly, styling-wise, I think it looks meaner, more aggressive, more purposeful. It is the sportier variant, even if it's not a sports car. Um, it has got the tuning, the stance. They're saying that this is just their entry level, like Abarth 500. They're going to introduce a 595 variation or a 695 variation that's going to be even more talky and powerful. So what I'm arguing is that they don't have, we don't have any option and they don't have any option. Just to sit here and go, oh, well, it hasn't got a manual gearbox and it doesn't sound right. It's too, you're, you're screwed because... We're not screwed and we absolutely do still have an option. We still have the combustion engine. But it's still an option. At, at the moment, on our current trajectory, uh, oh, that's a hard word to say, trajectory, potentially not, because all of these manufacturers are telling us at the moment they are focusing on going electric, Fair. that they are going to get rid of their combustion engine vehicles. And if you want to buy a new vehicle, electric is your choice. And so for me... In, in 13 years' time. No, but now. I mean, what's happening with Fiat and Abarth on the combustion engine front? Do we know? <clears throat> well... What then? What? So you're saying that if you want a bath now, you can't buy a, you can't go buy the combustion car anymore. But I'm saying in the next Im- immediate future, you can't buy a, with Jaguar. We're almost running out. They're onto their last couple of years of combustion engine production. Yeah, that's one brand, but the rest of them aren't doing that. No, but there are lots still that buy are. Them. There are lots that are, mate. We're seeing it across the board. You, what? They're just electric only. So many of these companies so are, electric, are, are, not doing anything are removing, else. removing combustion engine options and replacing that model line with an electric vehicle. We're hearing it's going to be for the R8. We're going to hear it's from the TT. We're going to hear with the Cayman, we're hearing it. So this is what they're all saying they're going to do. Now, we have spoken at great length how we think this might change and we don't think that's the... And we're hearing rumours that people are backtracking. But this is what they're telling us outwardly. And we're being told by governments and all these bodies that electric, you've got to go electric. And I'm just trying to give electric cars a break here and people who are considering this here is a cool option for us that like a slightly cooler smaller electric car here's a cool option the abarth which stylistically you know gives you something over a fiat 500e here's a cool option it's not like well yeah but screw it it's not I just go and buy yourself a combustion engine car what if you want an electric car well if you want one go and buy one well i wouldn't i wouldn't if you really want something i would never say to someone don't buy it because i've told them not to it's up to them. They don't have to listen to me. No, I don't think they should. But uh, <laughs> having said that, <laughs> I've just had that whole argument because you really annoyed me. I'm now going to say two things that are going to completely... You're going to contradict yourself. Well, like no, you I'm, gonna, I'm not going to contradict yourself. It's going to play into your argument here, but I'm not going to... We're going to end it on this. Uh, so two Because I've won. No, no. Again. T- two things. Um, 
Actually, it's really it. one. It's really one thing because actually the benefit is you charging. We said we talk about charging. Uh, Abarth 500e, you can charge in 35 minutes from a fast fast charger. So that's like 85 kilowatts, I think. Yeah. Um, so it's 45 quid probably as well. Uh, uh, if you're at home charging, it's still a small, quick charge, 190 miles. That's more than anyone's daily commute. So you could probably do a week's worth of commuting for the average person uh, off one charge. So it's good, usable battery range. It's not, oh, it's going to take me 23 hours to charge it and blah, blah, blah. Like that Mercedes EQS AMG, that's such a huge battery pack. But, 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 we don't have pricing announced yet. They are expecting <laughs> it to cost over 35 grand. Yeah, I mean that doesn't surprise me at all because a normal a normal one's twenty five grand or more, right? No, no, five hundred. The Fiat five hundred is thirty to thirty four. What the electric five hundred e st- starts at thirty grand, goes up to thirty four yeah. grand, and then um, but the the the, the combustion pe- engine the, car, the, yeah, it starts at nineteen, doesn't it? Oh, it might probably gone up with inflation. Over uh, the... Yeah, but not the above one though. No, no. So the yeah, you're right. I don't know what in the combustion it's engine probably mid twenties, right? Yeah, fine. Yeah. Twenty. 25, 26 for a 595 like competition yeah. or something like that. So that's 10 grand more. 10 grand more, yeah. 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 That, that, that's, I mean, you know, that's the inherent issue that I have with electric vehicles. But anyway, that was an argument and conversation I did not want to have, which really annoys me because we're going to come on to what was supposed to be our main topic, uh, <laughs> but it's now going to have to be shortened. <laughs> uh, which actually, you know, isn't completely irrelevant in the discussion we just had, which is that BMW 3.0 CSL, what would you call it? Uh, an a honorary car? Ship. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, but you know, so an M4, a celebration, yeah. So, so this is a car. I've now forgotten how many units they're making. Is it fifty units? Four, probably, because that's what they're going to sell. Oh no, they're already sold out. I think. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're already sold out. So this is a car that is celebrating fifty years of BMW M. Yeah, and it's supposedly going to cost. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. As Tony already mentioned, it's a rebodied M4. Oh yeah, you need your head testing. This car, I think, makes close to no sense. It, it's it's one purely for collectors. Um, they're saying it's the most powerful straight six engine ever to go in a BMW at five hundred fifty two horsepower. Brilliant, manual well only. Um, I'm trying to find here. It's got largely all carbon fiber body, very unique bodywork, which is celebrating. It's an homage. That's the word I was looking for. An homage to the original um, CSL. I actually think it looks a bit funky. Like, I don't think they've nailed it. There have been various concepts over the years of BMW celebrating M car heritage, like the, the 2002 and things like that. I don't think they nail this. It looks a bit fugly. Did you look at pictures properly? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I couldn't care less. Yeah, but, but like, did you study like, did you look at it, look at it, or you just skim past well, I like it? I look at a bird, no. <laughs> I'm not surprised. No, I don't look at any car. I don't, like, zoom in and no. look at lines and stuff. I mean, I'm not interested. I, I think it's I think it's awkward looking. I, d- I don't think they nailed it, but we'll have to wait and see see one in the flesh. Just 50. Just 50 units being made. I'm so surprised they are at 750 grand. 750. Surprised they found 50 people. $1,000. But here's the reason. This is what I wanted to bring up. Is this one route that we're going to see... Uh, enthusiast marks going down. So Ferrari, we know they've got the, you know, they did the Daytona SP3, the Monza SP2 and SP1. We've seen Renault with that Renault 5 turbo electric. I think you leave Ferrari out of this conversation because they're the only ones I think that can really get away with it because of what they are and who they are. Biggest, you know, most powerful car brand in the world. But let's talk about the the mass brands, essentially. Well, yeah, mass brands. No, no, so let me ask the question then you can see what you want to do yeah. mass brands-wise. Lamborghini with the Countach, uh, that rebodied Aventador. Yeah. We've seen a number of, of performance or sort of enthusiast marks going back to their heritage and sort of creating new homage or celebratory versions. But Lamborghini have been doing that with their V12s all the while, mate, with the Cyan and the other ones. They're just rebodied... Aventadors or Mercialagos. My point being, it's celebrating an old car. So it's rebodied to look like, stylistically be like, right, okay, just like fine. with this 3.0 CSL. Okay, fine. So it's, it's t- you know, it's nothing new. We, as you say, we're getting nothing new. This is an M4 rebodied. That's an Aventador rebodied. The Daytona SP3, you're right, is something a bit different because it's kind of like laugh chassis. Yeah, uh, yeah, A12, yeah. Uh, what's it called? Um competizione there's never you know, nothing like, really been like it yeah, yeah so yeah, it, yeah. it's unique in that sense yeah. um but we are seeing it more and more and so for enthusiast brands do you think this is their route of like right we've got to do all the bloody 
um, mass market EV stuff. No, I'll tell you where it's carry on, but I'll tell you where it's come from. No, no, I've talked enough. Let, let, chat. I'll tell you where it's come from. It's come from all these resto companies. Resto mods. Yeah. So what it is is it's the manufacturers going. Well, we'll have a bit of that market as well. So yeah. what we will do is we'll make a modern version of it, make it look like the old car, and charge seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. People like Singer can charge whatever they like. Eagle charge what they want for a for an old rebodied e-type so why can't us as a big bad manufacturer why can't we build a proper one that will work all the time we'll base it on our normal car and charge you seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars sounds like a bargain it's it's a <laughs> it's that's a, basically it yeah no no it's and it's a very good point that i hadn't factored in that resto mods would motivate it's a bit like you know matte paint and satin paint that came along off the back yeah, yeah. of vinyl wraps and things like that loads of stuff mate stereos back in the day so if you remember you might not remember but back in the day if you wanted a big powered stereo in your car you'd have a big subwoofer in the back and you'd cut your door cards out and put great big speakers in and then it becomes such a big market, the manufacturers thought, well, hold on a minute. We'll have that market. What we'll do is we'll go to Bose and Bang & Olufsen. We'll have a deal with them. They can supply us the good. We'll fit it from new. And it's just as good, if not better. We're going to warrant it. And um, we'll streamline it. Which is exactly, which comes what? back to exactly what I said first thing about streamlining businesses. <laughs> so we've come right now. Can we, can we go home now? That's it. Finished. See you next week. <laughs> I mean, that was amazingly poetic, but unfortunately, yeah. we still have a little bit more to oh. <laughs> Okay, so I think you've hit the nail on the head, and bravo, because I totally was blindsided by that. But, but, as I say, it, at $750,000 freaking dollars for an M4, and God knows what the Countach was, that was multiple millions, wasn't it? The Two million, my mates bought one. Yeah. I mean, oh, <laughs> it's the same guy with the Carrera GT. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no different guy. No, this boat's really stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing, right? Is is as maybe other purist cars get diluted more and more, or some of these manufacturers. Is this what we're going to end up with, or you think this is purely for the big collectors who've got too much money and 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 just want whatever is being fed to them? Oh, it's the ma- I think it's the manufacturers flexing their muscles and having a bit of a market. That's what the, you know that because it's what they do, mate. Yeah. They they've just got all the money in the world. They'll look at a market. They see that actually it's doing that, and they go, "Well, we'll have a bit of that because actually, actually, by the way, we're going to make a car." That will co- and it's genius in terms of business. Same, it's similar with the SUV business in terms of how much it costs to make an SUV. It's a piss take, really, and then what they charge you for it because it's a bigger, boxier version of a normal saloon car. Same with that BMW. Yeah. Cost them twenty five grand to make. They'll tell you a lot more because of the of course they the will. exquisite carbon fiber uh, bodywork which adds aerodynamic. That will be the cost. That yeah. the, the the there'll be there'll be a. The carbon fiber body weight genuinely because it is sculpted and it is very unique. But so I say it costs sixty thousand quid then per car. Per, per car, I would. I'm going to just be kind to BMW and say it costs one hundred and fifty grand. No per car. chance. No, and they're you, still making five hundred grand profit. Oh no, mate! You, 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 you really carbon fiber is quite expensive to develop, though, isn't it? But well, it is. But honestly, you'd be amazed the money in manufacturing in general yeah. right across the board yeah. in clothes in shoes in handbags in cars it, it the the biggest cost is the normally the marketing and the um, oh yeah the, Sorry, the okay. i get what you're saying you 100% i just thought the development of unique carbon fiber parts that have to be crash tested and structurally in, in, in what's called structurally sound and then also designed to have unique curves and body parts i, I just assumed that the development of that would probably have some costs associated with Poss- it. Possibly, for sure. Yeah. But I, I would say the markup in that car will be eye-watering. Yeah. yeah. I would think, because it is loosely based on an M4. Yeah, not loosely. <laughs> yeah. It's just a rebodied M4 yeah. with all the options ticked. Yeah. So they've got M performance, there's yeah. M performance, that M... So an M4 is... And 80, 90, every option ticked. Every option ticked. Every option ticked. 85, 90 grand. And then an ECU tune, 95, mm. the courtesy of Litchfield. Yeah. I bet that cost BMW per unit 10 grand to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that maybe really a bit more, a, maybe yeah. 15 grand. So when you compare the, the comparative percentage, it's through the roof, mate. Yeah. It'll be yeah. through the roof. 
Well, they'll Bravo, never tell BMW. you that. Bravo, yeah, BMW. yeah, yeah. And I'm all for it as a thing to celebrate. And I said it when we did the when I covered the Dakar on the main channel. I'm I'm happy for these manufacturers to make these cars because cool. Why not? Like it's a thing. It's never going to be on our radar. These are not cars that we're going to buy, and they are collector pieces. But yeah. I like that they're doing them. I think they're, I think the Countach, when I see pictures of the, that modern Countach, I'm like, oh, cool. And if I saw on the road, I'd be like, oh yeah, mega. But even I'm, you know, it's not for us. But, yeah. But I, I don't want to. I don't want to stop them from doing it. Yeah. I think it's cool, and I don't know. I don't know if I prefer it to resto mods, but I like the idea of it. Yeah. Modern versions. Well, anyway, as I say, this episode did not go at all to how I thought. I think it went well. Oh, it's, I think, <laughs> it went well, but we got very distracted arguing about an Abarth. Um, uh, to me, but uh, anyway, that is what it is. Um, remember, stay around for the next five minutes so we can just chat to you a little bit more about Recast for those of you that are interested in checking it out. Uh, as I mentioned, next week, Monday the must be Monday the twelfth, I think. We're gonna be doing our first live stream recording session. Um and then as we go into Christmas and the new year, hopefully they'll become more and more regular. It will depend on our uh being around. But yeah, we'll obviously always pre announce those. But yeah, if you want to find out more about how recast works, uh hold tight. But for those of you who are uh finishing up with us uh here today, uh, thank you for watching and for listening. Uh, obviously if you're watching on the YouTube channel and you want to continue to enjoy episodes here, subscribe, turn on notifications. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or any uh, podcast player, then you can follow us there too. Leave us a review. We love it when you leave us a review and a rating. Uh, Tony's at Tony Gravel with Car Sales on most social media platforms. And I'm at Seen Through Glass on most social media platforms. Uh, anyway, so yeah, recast. As I say, the link is in the description below. Uh, I just wanted to cover off a few sort of things just to clarify of how you can enjoy the content, um, how you can best watch it. Uh, obviously, when you go up and you sign up to, to recast and then follow our page, you can choose to have notifications, email notifications of when we post content. Our plan is to usually do our live stream sessions on a Monday lunchtime is usually the plan because yep. um, that's when we tend to record anyway. So they'll always get pre-announced the week before so you can basically set yourself a reminder. You can sign up to that live stream session, set yourself a reminder. And then as soon as that live stream has finished, that raw kind of recording in sense will be available to watch until the episode goes live on YouTube and Spotify on Thursday. So if you can't join us on a Monday lunchtime or whenever we're doing that live stream, but you still want to see the episode early, you can do that. It'll be sitting there. And as I say, at the moment, I think most of our episodes are going to be circa 100 credits, which is about one pound. So the way that I've been enjoying Recast recently, since we uh, first sort of got in touch with them and, and started chatting about moving some content over to their platform, uh, is I top up my wallet uh, basically each month. I just chuck in like a tenner in there or something like that. And then I just enjoy the content I want to watch. Then when it runs out, I just chuck in another tenner. Lovely. Yeah, usually it's probably not a month because most content is fairly well priced on there. And for us, we're going to be posting about six to eight videos a month. So you're going to be looking at sort of six to eight quid a month, uh, roughly. Lovely. Um, so yeah, so hopefully fairly affordable. That's the best way to do it in terms of credits. Um, but also, like I mentioned, if you don't want to top up with cash, you can earn credits. So you can choose, I say, to watch ads on the Recast platform, uh, or you can share the content. Which send we, it to all your mates. That's what we really want you to do. Yeah. Please send it to all your mates. Um, there's not a specific app at the moment. It is a web uh, a website, I suppose, but you can add it to your home screen uh, if you're using a mobile device. If you don't know how to do that, I think Recast has an explainer on their site of how to do that, so it's easily accessible. Um, you can stream to TV uh, or, or cast to TV, so if you enjoy watching these things on TV, you can do that from your mobile, mobile device or laptop as well um have people had any other questions uh, if you want to interact with us during the live stream best do that via twitter at the moment and just hashtag behind the glass mm -hmm. uh, we'll announce that during the live stream uh, process um what else has anyone mentioned well i can't really think but if you have any other questions about recast please get in touch with get us. in the comments or get in the comments or send us an email btg at seenthroughglass.com um amazingly the recast team we have a, we have a channel manager at the recast lovely team. very nice man called christian uh, has actually offered to speak to any of you if you have any specific queries or issues which i thought was very kind of him so uh, uh hopefully he's not going to be inundated but um yeah we're really excited by recast yeah i think you know we see it as a great opportunity to to grow some new 
uh, well, grow a new audience, but also grow our content library and develop some new fun ideas for you. So hopefully you'll get behind it. Uh, but as I say, if you're still not into it, do not stress. Uh, you're just going to miss out on some cool exclusive content. Yeah. Some early access. Some little snippets. Little snippets, which we'll be teasing out, making you real jealous about. Um, anyway, I think that's it for now. So go check it out. At least go and have a look. Uh, link is in the description. Head over, check out the recast behind the glass page. And we'll be back with you for another episode post our live stream recording session next week.